I we now start tonight with this further aspect with regard to the theme the godly person. Tonight we start with the theme a godly person is zealous. Why is he zealous? Because the triune God is the zealous God. We read in Isaiah chapter 9 how God is the zealous one. Isaiah 9 and verse 12 how God is the zealous one. Isaiah 9 and verse 7. Listen to this wonderful prophecy. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And then the word, the sentence, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Will do what? The answer is, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish what is prom has been promised here hundreds of years before it ha happened, centuries ahead of time. To establish a king on the throne of David, even Christ himself eventually in the millennium and in a spiritual sense forever. And this will be done with justice and with righteousness. Satan will try to stop it through people. He will try to stop it, but he won't manage to stop it because God is too zealous in God's zeal as the zealous God. He will accomplish it. And he did accomplish it because he is the zealous God of the universe. A second example with regard to the zeal of God, the Heavenly Father. Isaiah chapter 37 and verse 32. For out of Jerusalem, for out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant and out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord will do this. A band of survivors, the Germans call it the Überrest, will remain. A remnant will remain. A group of survivors. Why? Not because they will be so good that they will survive, but because the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. God in his zeal won't allow us to remain, that, that not to happen. He is the one who is so on fire and so serious, so zealous for the performance of his will and for the accomplishment of his purposes and for the fulfilling of his mighty prom divine promises that that brings the guarantee and that's why it did happen. That's why it will happen again soon when one out of three Israelites after the great war that is coming will be saved. One out of every three, not because they that good, but because the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish it. So God in his zeal accomplishes all that he plans. Okay, there are many other examples that we can mention, but two examples with regard to God the Father suffices for this evening. How about God the Son? How about the Lord Jesus Christ? In which way and in which spirit did he cleanse the temple two times, twice? At the beginning of his earthly ministry of three and a half years, and also at the closing of his earthly ministry, Let's take the one example, the first one. John chapter 2 and verse 17. But let's read all of it. We start with verse 13. John 2, starting with verse 13. This happened during the earthly 
ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Verse 14, in the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. Verse 15, and making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Verse 16. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. Verse 17. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Lord Jesus, just like God the Heavenly Father, zeal for your house will consume me. And why the zeal for God's house, for God's temple, which should have been a prayer for all nations. The Lord Jesus was so serious, so zealous with the zeal of his Father in the power of the Holy Spirit that he couldn't take it that the Father's temple that had to be a prayer for all nations was made a den of robbers and a house of trade where mammon was served, the money God was served and people made money. And therefore his anger, his godly anger sprouting from his zeal, issuing from his zeal, the zeal of Christ, the godly divine zeal of Christ caused them to drive them out and they all fled because they realized he's not going to take no for an answer. He's powerful in his zeal. God the Father is always successful in his zeal and the Lord Jesus is always successful in his zeal. It's a divine zeal. It comes through his spirit and he shows what a serious God he is. When he decides to perform something, he doesn't allow anybody to stop him. If he decides to cleanses and purifies his temple, he does it because he's serious about it. He's serious and zealous for the honor of his own name. Let us come to a second example of the zeal that Christ the Lord showed. He showed it when he had to heal people. He did it with zeal in all seriousness from the deepest desire of his heart. We had this example in other contexts, but let us, let us take it again in this context. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 and verse 41. And a leper came to him, imploring him and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. We already said last time. To, be a, have been, to, to, to have been a leper in those times with a death sentence. One was driven out of the, uh, the community of the, the Israelites because it was an incurable disease. If you want to, you can make me clean. You can heal me. And verse 41, moved, moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will, I want to be clean. In his pity, he was zealous. He was so zealous, so serious, that he would not allow himself not to heal the man. And in the power of his zeal and pity, he healed him. And that's the way he always heals, as the zealous one, serious in the fire of his, fire of his fervent love. A third example with regard pertaining to Christ and his zeal. In his zeal he awaited the baptism of suffering that was awaiting him as the shadow of the cross already spread over his life. Luke chapter 12 and verse 50. Luke chapter 12 and verse 50. The Lord Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already Kindled. Verse 50. How a, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. 
But listen to verse 49. I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled, it could hardly wait in his divine zeal to cast the fire on the earth, to bring the vision between the saved and the unsaved, to reveal the heart's desires and motives of many, in order to save the one group and in order to condemn the others who would not listen. And he could hardly wait until it would be accomplished because he was so zealous, so on fire, with the fire of God in his heart and his mind, in order to accomplish it. And therefore, he showed his zeal, the fire of his since, uh, uh, seriousness about it, by moving towards Jerusalem. We knew he had to pass in accordance with the Father's will as the one who uh, had to fulfill his earthly ministry through, through one town and then through another. Through one city and then through another, he would never return there. Only once he would preach there. Only once he would heal their sick. Only for a certain appointed period of time. He would remain in every town, in every city. But we read, as he was preparing to die upon the cross, he set his face towards Jerusalem. He was in his zeal very serious and he said, I am absolutely purpose driven and I'm going only one way. And that is the way of my father's will. I'm not going to veer to the left. I'm not going to stray to the, to the right. I'm, only, I'm not going to speak to the Greeks when they want to speak to me because my father didn't tell me to speak to them. I'm only going to speak to those whom the father told me to speak to, commanded me to speak to, and I'm going to do it in the way of his appointment and at the time of his appointment. And why was he so serious about it? Because the zeal of God devoured him and caused him to remain serious and purpose-driven and not to be brought up uh, off from that road, not doing one thing extra, not doing one thing less, not speaking one word superfluously, not speaking one word less, uh, less than was, what was needed. If we are zealous with the zeal of God, we go for that one purpose, and we remain purpose-driven. It is so often the reason for the lack of remaining purpose-driven, goal-orientated, within the Father's will, within Christ's will, under His leading and guidance as we follow Him. The reason for that so often is a lack of zeal, a lack of the burning fire of God in our hearts and minds, a lack of seriousness. A fourth example, a next example regarding the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ pertaining to the zeal we find in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. But let us start with verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain and strengthen with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. As a scholar is taught by, a pupil is taught by his teacher in the school, he was early, up early in the morning waiting on his father in prayer alone because he was zealous to hear what he had to do during that day, for every second of the day, to which person he had to speak in order to strengthen them with words and quicken them, etc. And therefore, because he was so serious and zealous, God the Father gave, regarded him and always accompanied him and always uh, led him rightly because he was zealous in the zeal of the Heavenly Father. They were in harmony and in unity with one another with regard to the zeal that they had, the burning, fiery seriousness 
in order to accomplish their purpose. So the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I, verse 5, I turned not backward. He went forwards. Now, what is remarkable about this prophecy, it was uttered by the prophet Isaiah and written down by the prophet Isaiah literally hundreds and hundreds of years before the Lord Jesus Christ came to live in Israel, to be born there and to live there and to fulfill his ministry there. And then, because he did not turn backward, he was so zealous and so serious, even when he had to be lashed with a whiplash by the Roman soldiers after they had captured him, after the traitor Judas had kissed him with that treacherous kiss, kiss of treachery. He says here, hundreds of years before the time, through the pen of the prophet Isaiah, verse 6, I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. The Roman soldiers were so cruel, they pulled out his beard, they spat in his face, and they struck him with that whip, and they made a mockery of him, and they caused him to suffer intensely, infinitely, unbearably for flesh and blood, and his, the furrows on his back looked like the furrows opened by a plowshare in, in, a, in a field that it needs to be prepared for the seed to be sowed in it. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull off the, my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. What enabled the Lord Jesus to remain so serious even as it became more and more difficult? We find the answer in verse 7. But the Lord God helps me. Another uh, translation is, the Lord God will help me, and he helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have not been brought to shame. And therefore I will not suffer defeat. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. What does that mean? Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. I, have ma I made my head, my forehead, as hard as stone, a very hard stone. A flint stone is a very hard stone. In other words, all opposition will come against me, but you cannot break the flint stone. It is too strong. It is too hard. It is too tough. And therefore, I know that I shall not be put to shame. Why did he make his face like a flint? Why did he decide nothing is going to cause me to veer from my course? Because the zeal of the Lord of hosts was burning in his mind, was burning as a deep desire in his heart, an overreaching, overarching desire, and therefore he could not but have success with regard to every step of his earthly uh, ministry and his way of road of suffering towards the cross, with regard to every single detail thereof. And I know, therefore, that I shall not be put to shame. And we can continue. And eventually, he died upon the cross, even with the same result because of his zeal, his intense seriousness. I so deeply desire, with such a burning desire of spiritual fire of deep desire that it quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy even as the people are trying to bring me not to listen to him and to say I give up let me come from the cross I'm not going to finish this task even as they were were, 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 were laughing at him as they were scoffing at him even as his father forsook him and he had to cry out in anguish, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because of his spiritual zeal, his divine zeal, nothing could stop him. Through his divine zeal, in the power of his divine zeal and seriousness, 
that overarching desire. He quenched the fire of every contradicting purpose and enemy, and he eventually called out, It is finished! Tesselestai! And in the same zeal, he rose from the grave on the third day after he had been buried. And for the next 40 days, he showed his zeal as he continued to do everything in order to prepare his disciples to continue with his, the part two of his ministry since starting with the day of Pentecost. We read in many verses in the Old and in the New Testament that he must rule and reign, King Jesus must rule and reign from heaven's throne where he is sitting in his glorified body at the right hand of the Father until he will have made every enemy the footstool of his feet. Why will Christ accomplish that? Why will nobody be able to stop him from doing so? Because he is not lukewarm in zeal. That is the answer. Because he is red hot, then becoming white hot in the fire of his zeal and desire, burning desire to fulfill God's will. And therefore he's going to do it. Had he been a God, had he been a Christ, a mediator, a king upon the throne, who acts and executes his ministry on behalf of his father, in order to please his father, in order to let his father's kingdom come, and his father's will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Had he been a lukewarm one, he would have lost his appetite eventually, and he would have veered from that course. But we can be certain, brothers and sisters and friends, that he will continue and he will accomplish this because the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do it. His zeal causes it to continue, and therefore he will continue until he will have accomplished it. Accompanying this zeal, this absolute seriousness, is the power of God. That brings the power. That brings the success. Now let us now come to the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Now what did the Lord Jesus promise his disciples he would do with regard to the Holy Spirit after he would have entered heaven on the 50th? Uh, and, and, and how would he, after that, pray it from day 41 to the 50th day, for the promise of the Father regarding the Holy Spirit to be poured upon them as they were waiting in the upper room. Let us check it out and see what this has to do with zeal, with divine zeal. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. He told his disciples, no, not the Lord Jesus told his disciples, John the Baptist told his disciples and the people who came to him to be baptized by him with a baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sins for the forgiveness of, for the forgiveness of their sins in order to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God, to prepare the way for him to appear on the scene and to start fulfilling his ministry. He said, according to verse 11 of Matthew 3, I, John the Baptist, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire with the Holy Spirit and fire yes on the day of Pentecost he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire 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 Pre what does the fire represent coming with the fullness of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that would have been accomplished as the fulfillment of his promise 
And as the promise even as given through John the Baptist on the day of Pentecost, it represents the zeal, the white heart zeal of God, the Father and the Son. The fullness of the Spirit would inaugurate the period, the epoch of fire. Fire in the hearts and in the minds of the disciples not to veer from their course in order to fulfill their ministry in the way the Lord Jesus did. In the way the Lord, the God, the Heavenly Father does it. And He's still doing it. Namely, the fire of the divine zeal, zeal seriousness. Uh, overcoming every obstacle. And also the fire of the seriousness to purge his winnowing floor, his threshing floor of all that is not pure and all that is not genuine and all that is not true. Just check it out. Look at the rest of the verse. Matthew 3 verse 11, B. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, verse 12. Or not to, uh, be the next verse, verse 12. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clear and thoroughly purge his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Our Lord Jesus, just like the Heavenly Father, in the power of His Spirit, because nobody was as filled with the Spirit as He was, was so, He's so serious about giving the fire of fervent love and seriousness in the heart of His disciples. And how much fire was in the heart of Peter? How much fire was in his thoughts? How much fire... And zeal and seriousness was in his preaching and in his sermon as he preached about Christ. Therefore, the 3,000 that needed to get saved could not remain lost because the fire of Christ's zeal consumed Peter as he was speaking because he had been filled with the Holy Spirit, he had been baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And therefore, if you read the History of the book of Acts, which is the history of the early church, the first two dec few decades. And according to Acts 1 verses 1 and 2, this was phase 2 of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Phase 1, Luke said, I wrote in my gospel of Luke. What he accomplished in this earth as he was in Israel, in his earthly body of humiliation. But he did it in his fiery, fervent zeal. And therefore he accomplished everything. When he had to ride on that filly of the donkey into the Jerusalem to hear Hosanna, Hosanna is the king. He did it. Because he was too serious, too zealous. There was too much fire in his heart. His desire was just too deep and too, too strong to enable himself not to do everything at the right time and in the right way and not to accomplish Phase 1, chapter 1 of God's plan for his ministry. But such a lovely verse. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. He said, in, the first, in my first book, O Theophilus, I tell you what the Lord Jesus Christ began to teach and to do. But now, O Theophilus, this is what he meant, this is what he implied. Chapter 2 of the Lord Jesus Christ's ministry is starting. And I'm writing this down, O Theophilus, in this book called the Book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. But in the case of the Apostles and the other disciples, starting with the day of Pentecost, it was done by the heavenly Christ of glory, sitting in his zeal in heaven, working in the minds and in the hearts of his true followers, his true disciples, his true beloved ones, 
to give, to give them so much zeal and so much seriousness they, that they, their desire, their zeal to be used by him mightily for the salvation of his elect people and the elect people of his heavenly father and his zeal and his absolute seriousness to harden the others that would withstand him and resist was just too strong to allow the, the, them not to be as fully decided as Christ himself was. Resolve, we're going to have success and the Holy Spirit gave them success in every case. Study every chapter of the book of Acts, beloved people, and you will find that they always had success. They always had success. And the Satan tried in so many ways to stop that. But they could not. He could not through King Herod. He could not through Simon the Sorcerer. He could not through Ananias and Sapphira because, yes, because the fire of the zeal, the seriousness of God was burning in their hearts and therefore they would continue and they did continue. I already told you where the fire of God is, of the zeal of his zeal, the, 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 uh, his zeal is, there is power. There the power of God is. There the power of his word is. There the power of his spirit is to convert to save and to destroy the others. And therefore, Satan's fiery darts got, got cleansed. Satan is also a zealous Satan, a zealous opposer. But we read in Ephesians 6, by the, the sword of the Spirit, uh, we, we, uh, we, we and, and the helmet of salvation, etc., and the shield, we shall quench all the fiery darts of the devil because the zeal and the fire of God in his seriousness is stronger and more mighty mightier than the zeal of Satan to destroy and to bring God's plan to naught and therefore we are more than conquerors to the one who loved us according to Romans 8 because his zeal burns in our hearts in order to illustrate that even better, I now turn to Acts chapter 2, and I want to focus especially on verse 3. Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. Okay, let's read it. They prayed with all seriousness and all zeal for the coming of the fullness of the Spirit, the women also prayed to along with them. And then the 50th day came, the appointed day that God's word had, and God's prophets had prophesied about, starting with Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Where the zeal of God is, we're all together in one place. Nobody wants to stay at home. If you stay at home, you do not have the zeal of God. You have not the seriousness of God. You do not have the seriousness of the Spirit of God. You have no power. You have no obedience. Verse 2. And suddenly, suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Not a little wind, not a little zephyr, but uh, the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Fire, it, the fire came from heaven. It, was, it looked like real fire in the form of fire, symbolic fire. And it came as one fire, but the moment the fire descended upon the 120 there, the ladies that had prayed the sisters in the Lord Jesus, the brothers in the Lord Jesus, suddenly the tongues divided and a tongue of fire came upon the head of every brother and every sister, of every 
one of the 120 there. What did that cloven tongues of fire represent and symbolize? It symbolized, brothers and sisters, the seriousness, the zeal of the Lord of hosts. The Holy Spirit is a zealous spirit. The Holy Spirit is a serious spirit. Because the Lord Jesus received his seriousness, his zealous, his zeal from the Holy Spirit. And the Father in heaven, God the Father, the only God of heaven and earth and the entire universe, is also the one who is possessed and is being controlled by the zeal of his own spirit. And therefore, the right way to symbolize the coming of the fullness of the Spirit was the cloven tongues of fire. But why? Tongues of fire. What is a tongue? You cannot speak without a tongue. If they would cut out your tongue, you would not be able to speak, right? You cannot form words. But why tongues of fire? In order to show, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The fire of the zeal of God. The fire of the zeal of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, who is ruling and reigning from heaven. And you will speak with such fire and such zeal and such seriousness, with such a deep desire and such warmth, spiritual warmth, that you will win the lust to the Lord Jesus and the others will be hardened. And you know, when you go to South Africa, certain parts, especially when you go to certain parts of Australia during the dry season, once that fire gets into that long grass, they cannot stop it. They come with helicopters. They come with things to spray it. They do their best. But they, some of them get killed. The animals get killed because the fire just continues and continues and continues. Nothing can stop the fire. By the time they have stopped the fire, the whole place has been burned off and burned down. And this is what is represented here. Satan, you cannot stop him. Demons of hell, you cannot stop him. You cannot stop his children because now the zeal of the Heavenly Father and of the Lord Jesus is resting upon them in his anointing and Christ the King is working mightily through them in his zeal and he's showing his zeal and seriousness in and through their, the way they speak and the way they, 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 they minister to the people. And the way in which they resist the devil so that he flies and has to fly, flee every time, that it was like a wildfire going through those long grasses and no, nothing could stop it. Satan could not stop it. No demon could stop it. No enemy could stop it. And that is the history of the book of Acts. Every time a new attack, but every time a mighty victory, victory because the zeal of the Lord of hosts the zeal of Christ was resting in their hearts, was burning from their hearts and then new minds, and therefore their tongues were tongues of fire, and they spake, they spoke with the seriousness and the zeal of the Almighty Christ. And therefore the people realized they are serious now. Christ is serious. King Jesus is serious. And the Heavenly Father is serious. I cannot withstand him i cannot allow myself to resist him and therefore their hearts were pierced and they were pierced to the heart pierced to the quick according to acts chapter 2 and they got saved because satan could not stop this is what we need this is the ultimate sign of the possession of the fullness of the infilling and of the continued and progressive increasing infilling of the Holy Spirit because he's a fiery spirit. He's a spirit of zeal. He's a spirit that is jealous. He wants to possess everyone that has been elected from the, before the foundation of the world for Christ. And he desires with that burning desire that overcomes all obstacles that the Christians will become holy as Christ is holy, as the Heavenly Father is holy, and therefore in his zeal, he chastises them, he rebukes them, he teaches them, he leads them, he guides them in his zeal, and he makes them zealous so that they go for the fullness thereof. 
Okay, we now spoke about some examples of the seriousness of God the Heavenly Father, of the zeal of Christ the Son. We spoke about the zeal of the Holy Spirit. We also mentioned some examples of the fullness of the Spirit that as He came upon them, they became zealous with the zealousness of God and of Christ. And therefore they were also unstoppable. And God and the Father and Christ was unstop became unstoppable through them. Now we come more particularly and we'll only be able to make a start that this is the only way in which to truly get saved. Nobody ever got saved in another way. Let us deal with three scriptures. Matthew, in this regard, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. From the days of the, the, the Lord Jesus was speaking, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. The spiritually violent people take the kingdom of God by force. They enter into the kingdom by force, by spiritual violence. What caused them to become so spiritually violent? What enabled them to be so, remain so spiritually violent that they would not... Uh, Take a, a, accept a, a refusal, they continued until Christ saved them. The zeal of God. The zeal of the Lord Jesus. The zeal of the Holy Spirit making them serious, zealous to repent, zealous to meet Christ. And they took it by spiritual force. Only those who are so zealous will take the kingdom and enter into it and become a citizen of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, by spiritual force. There's no such thing as a lukewarm, cold and clinical conversion. That is Satan's kind of conversion. That is not the true one. Because those who truly entered into the kingdom did it by becoming spiritually violent, that means they became so serious, nobody could stop them. Nothing could stop them. Two uh, verses that confirm what I have just said. Let's have a look at them as well. Luke chapter 13, a very well-known verse that we have spoken about many times. Luke chapter 13 and verse 24. Listen to this. Let's start with verse 22 to get some context. Luke chapter 13, starting with verse 22. He, Jesus, went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. 23. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? He wanted to know, would it be a great number that will get saved or only a few? And instead of saying many of you at, at this stage, he, did, he answered the question more directly at another juncture, in another situation. This time he said, you don't be bothered about whether few or many are saved. You be bothered about and concerned about the question whether you are serious enough about it in order to get saved. Verse 23b, and Jesus said to them, 24, strive, strive to enter through the narrow door. Strive to enter through the narrow door means use might and main. Use everything at your disposal, your time, your energies, your understanding, the scriptures, the ministry of God sent men in order to help you. The prayers of the saints, plead with them, beg with them, say, God, Heavenly Father, I'm not willing to be lost, to remain lost. Lord Jesus, I must be saved. You press on. This friend comes and says, stop. That one says, don't go to those people that are fanatical. The next one says, this, the, 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 the preacher wants to manipulate you. Don't listen to him. Stay away. 
But you say, I cannot take chances. I cannot wait. I'm serious. I'm zealous. God has made me serious. There's a fire burning in my heart, a desire that has become greater than all other desires. And therefore, the Lord Jesus says, the only ones who will be able to enter through the narrow door of salvation, getting saved and born again, saved by Christ, cleansed by His blood, receiving Him in His heart, are the serious ones, serious enough to show the zeal, the zeal that the Holy Spirit gave you. Because the most tragic words, maybe the most tragic words, I would say, maybe the most tragic words in the entire Bible are the words following after that. Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Why are the majority of people, the millions and the millions upon millions of people, not able to press into the narrow door of true salvation and get truly born again and know that their Redeemer lives not only in heaven but in their hearts, having united them to the Heavenly Father, having cleansed them through His precious blood, having made them new creatures in Him and through Him, having caused all things, old things to have passed away, and all things to have become new in their lives. What has enabled them? What, what, what hinders the people? What blocks their way off from that? The simple reason is they're not serious enough. It's important, but it's not that important that I will come to an evening service. I already listened to a long morning service. I'm not going to come to this evening service. I'm serious, but I'm not that serious. People... One out of maybe 10,000 people who listen to the gospel, I guess, get saved. Because one out of 10,000, if not less, he gets possessed with a zeal that the Holy Spirit gives them. The rest is important, but let this thing stop me. This is more important. This is more important. I'm feeling a little lonely. I'm feeling a little depressed. I'm feeling a little sad. I'm feeling a little mad because he made me mad in, during the morning service. He didn't sh uh, sh uh, uh, seem to be friendly enough. Or I have other things that I want to do. They'll never enter heaven. Ne nobody has entered into the, to the narrow door of getting to know Christ. To after that continue to eventually pass through the pearly gates of the new Jerusalem in heaven who has not been made fully serious with the seriousness and the zeal of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which caused them not to allow any stumbling block to stop them. Let us end the sermon with a third scripture. Revelation chapter 3, a third scripture with regard to salvation and getting saved. Revelation chapter 3, you know it very well, but we have to check it out again. Revelation chapter 3, starting with verse 19. The Lord Jesus says, those whom I love. That means he does not love every person with this kind of love. He only loves those whom the Father has given him as he select people from in eternity past. Only those he loves with this love of election. I reprove I, and discipline. I rebuke, I reprove, I discipline. I let you go, th go through all difficult times, through all hell on earth. This problem after, and then the next one, and then the next one, in order to wake them up, to show them, I'm speaking to you. I'm calling to you, become serious. And that's what he, what he says here. There's a reason why I hit you so hard, why I give you so much difficult times. I'm behind it. I'm behind every circumstance as long as you last. So be zealous, be zealous, be zealous and repent. Be zealous and repent. Become serious with the seriousness that the Spirit gives you. And repent in seriousness. Don't play around. Don't be lukewarm as you do it. Do it in all seriousness. 
And then you will truly get forgiven. If you do not repent with zeal, the zeal of God, you have not truly repented. You have just taken a little decision for Christ and you're still a lost person. But the next verse, verse 20. After the person has repented, his sins has been forgiven, he's now been united with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Heavenly Father. The Spirit is living in him. He's got a new heart. And now he hears the following friendly words. The wonderful words. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, have the feast with him and he with me. You see, after you have experienced, have you, exper you, you repented with zeal, with the divine seriousness, from all your sins, all your idols, all your false gods, comes the zeal, the warmth of the love feast, the personal love feast with the Lord Jesus Christ. But can you discern, beloved, as you listen to me, friend as well, not only brothers and sisters, the zeal with which the Lord Jesus Christ works in the life of the elect. He hits them hard, and they still don't listen. He hits them again, he hits them again, and he causes their minds to become clear, and he lets shine through his spirit, some spiritual light into their minds and into their hearts, and he shows them, there's a reason why I keep hammering at you, keep giving you all hell, Causing you, the reason for that is I love you with the everlasting love, which is that very special, super special love that I, my Father, have towards our elect people. And I'm not going to stop until you're going to repent with zeal. But you have to react. You have to respond to that. And then I am willing to now make you serious, to give you that zeal so that nothing in life, nothing in death, Nothing in heaven, nothing upon earth, nothing under the earth will be as important to you as it, to get saved, to have the love feast with me, to get to know me as the Lamb of God who has taken away your sins as your King and Savior and to get to know the Heavenly Father through me. You see, if he really saves somebody, he has made him serious, zealous, and he repents with zeal, with full seriousness. And he starts to have the love feast with Christ and experience it and enjoy it with zeal, with the fire of God in his heart and mind. And that's the way he continues along life's pathway. Have you gotten saved like that? Why? We speak to 300 people, my experience, and one will get saved. One out of every 10 or 15 people coming to this church come again after a period. Why? I believe. That's what I believe. I can only tell you what I believe. They do not have the zeal of God. The zeal of the Holy Spirit is not in their hearts. The divine seriousness is, is not there. And they're lukewarm. And they're looking for a lukewarm church. They're looking for a lukewarm church. They're looking for a lukewarm service. For a clinical sermon that almost lulls you to, into a spiritual sleep again. Oh, beloved friend, why do you want to get be lost? Why do you not want to come to the Lord Jesus? Ask him, plead with him and with his father to make you serious about it. Because you're going to lose your life forever. Forever, for time and for eternity, you will burn in hell. In his zeal, God will continue consuming you, consuming you and it will never stop. Because he cannot take it that you have taken it so lightly. I plead with you in the love of Christ. Ask him to open your spiritual eyes. To show you how serious he is about saving you. And plead with him and read his word and study and come for talks. And to listen to the sermons. Not allowing yourselves to be hindered from that doing so. Until you will experience that zeal. That seriousness. And then he will save you. In the power of that zeal. An example of that was the way the 3,000 got saved on the day of Pentecost. They had that zeal, that seriousness in their hearts. 
Peter said, let's start with a second sermon. You already said you're ready to, to receive Christ. You're ready now, right and ready to, to be baptized in Christ's name. He said, let's start with a second sermon. I must test you properly. And he started with a long sermon. Much longer maybe than the first one. He said, are oh, you willing to count the cost? You will have to be saved from this untoward generation. The Orthodox Jews will persecute you. The Judeans will persecute you. Are you willing to be persecuted for his name? Do you still want to be saved? And with joy they said, yes, we're serious. We're zealous. The zeal of God is resting upon us. He's burning in our hearts and minds. We want salvation. We want Christ. We want eternal life. We want to go with him on the narrow road that leads to heaven. We're not willing to remain lost. And they were baptized with joy. And they continued upon their way with joy and zeal. We want to look God willing next time. I don't think next week. Next week will be another kind of, there won't be an evening service. But the week after that, God willing. The precious history and teaching from scripture about the zeal of God upon his true people after he saved them. And what we accomplish in his power by remaining, remaining zealous instead of becoming a cooled off and a frozen people. May God add his own blessing to the sermon and may you not have listened to this sermon that it will eventually work towards your own condemnation, eternal condemnation but that that will bring true salvation to you and that you will realize only those few people who are made so zealous truly get saved. The others don't make it. They don't enter into the kingdom. They do not become spiritually violent enough. They do not take the kingdom by force. They do not press through until they know the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not miss it. Do not miss it. You cannot afford to miss it. Blessed be God. Blessed be unto Christ for their wonderful zeal that they also causes they also cause to rest upon us in the anointing of Christ the spirit and to well up from our hearts and our new minds with the fire of God of a burning desire to accomplish his will to see his people get saved and to see the saved people continuing without cooling off without losing the zeal and the fire of their first love towards him. Heavenly Father, enable us to respond to your word with all zeal. You only can grant us the zeal, can give us the zeal. Please do so. But please do the same in the case of the lost that are listening and of the others that will be listening and looking. And please, please make them zealous. Let them repent with zeal and get saved as the spiritually violent. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.